Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so we're here to talk about remote. So how do you empower? How do you build? How do you ultimately sustain uh, remote teams? So I work at Envision. Uh, I help run the international go-to-market. Uh, some of you may or may not know Envision, but a little bit of context, we're a design collaboration platform. So we work with 100% of the Fortune 100. We've raised over 350 million. Uh, but most importantly, we're fully distributed. Marketing t tells me that we are the largest fully remote company in the world, like no headquarters, nothing. Uh, I started when there was about 30 employees, um, and now we have people literally um, all over the world. And so uh, it started with Clark. So Clark Wahlberg is our CEO and founder. Uh, he was recently positioned as kind of wanting to get rid of the office for good. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate, but really in terms of the kind of the, the nature of why we went remote, like he's really big on you know, optimizing those creative moments and sort of minimizing those distractions to drive creativity. And the office obviously has a lot of distractions associated with it. We're in the design space. Um, so how did we get there? Like it started with hiring. Uh, when Clark first founded the company in 2011, it was a time in New York when you know, Google was moving in, sucking up all the engineering talent and really wanted to focus on laser targeting the best engineering talent in the world. And so that's how it started. That was sort of the, the initial DNA. And then it relates to productivity as well, right? So productivity, there's this whole concept you probably know about deep work, right? Those moments when you have you know, no or limited distractions and how exponentially more productive you are in those times. And then it's really who we are, right? You think about Envision and, uh, and kind of our product, like the product was designed and built by Clark when he ran a product design agency to interact with customers that weren't in the same office or the same location. So that's really kind of our DNA. And you know, increasingly, it's becoming who you are, right? I mean, you see the reports out there. This is from Mary Meeker's report about the interest in remote, right? People want that flexibility. They want the ability to travel. They want to spend time with their friends and family. People don't want to commute anymore. And so you've got to start thinking about that's what people want, right? And even with our world in the product design world, we recently did a, a design hiring report. We surveyed 1,600 product designers and about what they wanted in their next opportunity. You know, and 62% of them said remote was one of the most important things for their next opportunity. And again, this might not be right for everybody. That's not what I'm here to say. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we do at Envision. Um, and maybe you learn some stories about what works. And so if you think about remote, you know, I hear all the time the people that say, hey, remote, it's not for me. You know, you miss out on those water cooler moments or those little, you know, nuggets of inspiration when you're walking around or you don't get to whiteboard, you know, sitting around sort of collaborating and being creative or there's the socialization aspect of a sales environment or maybe you can't hear somebody on a call um, that's overcoming objection or whatnot. Or people might say today, like, I don't have a good setup at home, right? I room with like five other people or I go stir crazy unless I can't get out of the house. You know, they want to go out and have that social aspect. They want to go do the ping pong tables and interact with people. Like, I totally get that. Um, but the reality is there are ways to address these. You know, shameless plug, but there's a number of different digital whiteboarding tools out there. Like, you don't have to sit around and take a picture of the whiteboard or don't touch the sticky notes, right? There's ways to do that from a digital standpoint now. Even the water cooler, right? How scalable is that really? If you're in an office with eight floors of people, are you really interacting with people on multiple floors? And there's also a downside to some of these things, right? The gossip and the politics gets mitigated a little bit. On the socialization side, you know, we're big on Zoom and there's way to, ways to address that as well. And then the people that want to get out of the house, you know, we do hot desks and things like that with WeWork for those people that want to actually um, do it. But the way that we think about it is really around this concept of three C's. And so, you know, communication, collaboration, and culture. And I'll walk through them quickly. Um, communication is really the key, right? You've got to be deliberate. You know, even things like we do design sprints, right? Being very deliberate in the planning, mapping things out, timelines. Documentation, like documentation is the lifeblood of a remote organization. This is probably the hardest thing to do. And I'm not saying we do everything, you know, great, but we've got specific things that we do relative to, you know, how do we track things in, 
you know, confluence. We do things like the, the DACY model, right, to make sure that every initiative that we have, you know, has a specific owner. We know who's involved. We know who's contributing. We know who's approving. All of these things and having those in a central, in a central format, whether it's a sales team and you've got an internal wiki, engineering team like ours using Confluence, um, but really making sure that you're investing in recording those decisions. We actually do things like blogs internally instead of emails. You know, really give people context around the why of a particular decision. Post those centrally. But you need that central source of truth no matter what department you're in. Like, that's the key. And then when you're communicating, you know, you've got to be transparent. Like, this is especially important for us with 900 people all over the world. You know, we use things like... Uh, Culture amp, an engagement platform, right? Create the, uh, create the opportunity for those two-way conversations with people on your team. Allow them to give you feedback. What's working? How do they feel? How engaged? How inspired are they? Make sure you've got those vehicles set up and you're transparent. Being respectful. You know, some of this stuff sounds simple, but, you know, you, everybody knows when you're in an office and there's 10 people in a room and there's a couple people dialed in. At Envision, even on those occasions where we happen to be in the same room, everybody's on their same computer. I mean, on their own computer on those, uh, on those Zoom calls. You know, time zones. You know, my boss is in San Diego. I got a team in India. And, you know, making sure that you're deliberate about setting up time zones that work for everybody. Being really prescriptive. You know, a lot of people come into these remote worlds and they don't know what the expectations are. And you have to over communicate, you have to be prescriptive, you have to set some parameters, some, some uh, SLAs, you know, turning slack off during calls, so you're not getting that mach machine gun fire of you know, the little, the alerts, not having chats, cameras on, right? Little things like that, but setting that up so people know what the operating principles are around a remote environment. Collaboration, you know, this is our stack in terms of how we communicate. And there's a million different digital tools and platforms out there that are really good. So the reality is collaboration can be addressed pretty well through these digital tools. So culture is really where you need to double down, right? People want to go work at a company based on the culture. And people get really scared. I was scared when I was like, oh, shoot, 30, even when I joined, 30 people. I was like, remote? I'm a spaz. I need to talk to people. And, you know, you think about even our design hiring report you know, the importance of culture and what product designers are looking for. And they get scared about how are they going to be able to get that in a remote environment. So, you know, where do you focus? You know, it starts with hiring the right people. You know, figuring out, like, what are those questions that demonstrate that somebody's got a high EQ, that they're proactive, they're a cultural fit. You know, being able to take advantage. Like, we've hired somebody that was, like, the best in the world in their particular engineering field recently in Helsinki. Right? Being able to laser focus on those you know, really talented people. But also know, when I talk to people in interviews about what do you like about Envision? Oh, I love remote. I want to travel. It's like they're out. That's not a reason. Remote's a benefit. The other big thing about remote, and you know, we've iterated on this a number of times, is onboarding. Onboarding's really hard. Like make that first day meaningful. Figure out how do you drive some sort of an emotional connection, swag, whatever it is, for that first day. It's really intimidating your first day, sitting at home, maybe in your underwear, not knowing who to talk to, and you're like, oh, Jesus, what do I do? And then you look at things like onboarding, like planning that out, mapping it out to the, to the day. We've got plans around you know, 30, 60, 90-day programs, especially some of the more um, junior folks that come in. They don't even know how to spend their time. I don't. And so being really prescriptive, you should spend 10% of your day on self-development, 20% on whatever it is, but laying that out and doing those check-ins, if there's any place you need to overinvest in a remote culture, it's onboarding. And we do things at Envision, we give everybody $500 to set up their home office, buy a screen, buy a chair, whatever it is. Not everybody has a great setup. And if they don't have a great home setup, give them an incentive to go somewhere else. We have Coffee cards. Everybody at the company gets a $100 coffee card that recharges every month. So you can go out, work in a coffee shop. We used to do unlimited Starbucks cards. And then people in San Francisco found out you can use Starbucks cards at grocery stores. And that was the end of that. Um, but giving those people the opportunity and being inclusive. The question is how do democracies respond to those I think people scandals. know this. Uh, and what will it mean for, uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. I mean, shift is shifting... But a quick point on that, like 
you ask permission to be in somebody's house. Right, that's an intimate environment. Like be inclusive and envision if a kid walks in, if my kids walk in, introduce them, stop the call, introduce them. Like we've asked to be in your home. And so it's on us to be inclusive and you gotta make sure that you're allowing that and that's part of your culture. And even though you're remote and we're you know, 100% remote, there's still opportunities to go in person. What we do is we try to orient that around our customers. We have a design leadership forum, it's sort of a curated community of about 1,000 leaders uh, across the world, and we do dinners and VIP workshops and all of these things, and we overinvest in having people on our team go to those. We have a program called Delicious Empathy. Everybody at our company, sales, IT, execs, whoever, once a month have the ability to take a designer, not an Envision designer, a designer, out to dinner once a month and expense it. The one rule is you're not allowed to talk about Envision, right? But it's about getting out in the market, understanding our customers, building those key, uh, human and emotional connections. And that's really important, even if you're a remote company. And we do get together now in person. You know, we have an annual event, uh, IRL, in real life, and we've done it the last two years. And it's funny, you get together as a team and it's crazy how many hugs there are. Like people are so enormously positive to interact with these people on a human level that maybe they haven't spent a lot of time with. And these are incredibly productive and positive moments. It's a big part of our culture. And ultimately remote, like it's a privilege in some respects. You've gotta be accountable to the results. Like in the sales world, it's, you know, it's easy. You can't hide from the numbers. I had three guys on my team last year that were like, hey, we're gonna rent a house in the south of France for a month. I was like, great. I just want to measure their productivity. Yeah, they were 120% more productive. Like they know they earn that right. They want to be able to travel and they've got to deliver. So you've got to be accountable to the numbers, but also to the values. Like this is really important. If you don't have company values or principles, you need them because you've got to hold people accountable to them. Those behaviors and those activities, holding them accountable to them, but also celebrating them. The thing about remote is if you're gonna go remote and be full remote, you gotta be able to know how to do everything remote. You can't train in person, you gotta train, learn how to train in person, onboard, I mean in remote, onboard, and celebrate remote, right? We've got little shout outs that we do in the Slack channels about people living up to the values because it is a privilege. It does allow people to express themselves. One of our lead designers, this is a terrible image, I don't know why I put it in, but this has a super slick trailer next to their house. He drives around, he does his meetings from there. And you can get creative with remote. This is our Slack channel on home sharing. And obviously we're at a little bit of a different scale, but people literally go on there and say, hey, I got a place in Toronto. I'm out of the town for a month. Does anybody want it? Yeah, great, I got a flat in Madrid, I'll trade you. And we do little things, like Bonusly. I don't know if you've heard of Bonusly. It's a great little plugin. These little micro rewards, right? Where you don't get the opportunity to high five somebody or pat them on the back after something. Everybody at the company gets $30 a month that refreshes every month. And you give these little micro rewards. Hey, here's two bucks. Great job on that meeting. Three bucks. Really appreciate the help on that presentation. And it's public. Everybody sees it. And it's those virtual high fives and pats on the back that really like. The money adds up. People are buying Pelotons and stuff. Donut. Again, this is a plug-in. It's basically a chat roulette that allows you to, you know, interact with somebody. You sort of randomly pick somebody and you communicate with them for like 15 minutes a week. But it's a good way to... To, to, uh, to interact with people maybe you wouldn't normally do outside of your role. Virtual happy hours. Yes, they can be as lame as they sound, but you know, carving out that time and being deliberate about carving out that time. Everybody puts their camera on, cracks their drink or whatever, has conversations. We start off meetings with you know, the MTV crib style, like who's got the best home office set up? Who's working from the coolest place this week? Right, and that's part of the reason it works is because you know, no longer is it really just about work-life balance, right? It is about work-life integration, and I would say in a positive way. You know, so in summary, I think the benefits really do outweigh the downsides. And again, it's not for everybody, it's not for every industry, um, but it's worked for us as Envision as we've scaled to, you know, 900 people. Um, and it's part of our brand. But you know, for me, like, it allows you to prioritize your personal time, right? I walk my kids to school. I get to travel. I spent two weeks working from Greece last year. I closed a deal at the top of the Acropolis. You know, and those things are important. Like, it's meaningful. And I get my work done and all of that. But overall, like, that happiness, spending more time with the people that are most, you know, special to you, like, that overall happiness does translate to productivity. 
And more and more, like you see it, you see every report out there, like it's moving in this direction. People want remote flexibility. They want the ability to travel. Nobody wants to sit and commute anymore and sit in traffic. So it is what people want. There are opportuni to do opportunities to optimize it based on whatever your model is. Um, there is still times to get in person and celebrate and have fun. Um, but the reality is, like, that's how we make it work at Envision. Thank you.